In this video, we'll be going over the Windows install for Semantic Shapes. I know a lot of you guys like to use uh, Windows as your operating system, so I tried to do my best to support that. So I hopped on over to Windows and I was able to get all this working uh, within an Anaconda environment. Uh, the install is a little different from Ubuntu because there's some things we have to do to kind of work around to get this to work in Windows, but I'll be showing you guys uh, what I was able to get to work. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and install um, CUDA 10.0. If you're someone who already has like an older version of CUDA, like CUDA 9.0 installed, um, this might still be able to work, but you it's, it's possible that you have to downgrade to TensorFlow 112. Um, so if you want to try that for yourself, you're on your own. Um, I wanted to make sure that uh, 10.0 worked for everyone, so I'm just going to be doing a, a fresh install. And, and 10.0 is what was kind of recommended with TensorFlow 113, so that's why I did it. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, then pause this video and look up a guide on how to install like CUDA with TensorFlow GPU and try that for yourself. Um, for me, the process was pretty easy. I just ran the installer. I took the CUDNN binaries, I put them in bin and include. And it pre-appended all the stuff, all the environment variables um, that you need in your path and stuff for you, which was really nice. And um, after a restart, I was able to get this to work. So that's what I'll be using. Um, so now that we covered that, let's take a look at my desktop here. So I've cloned the Semantic Shapes repository onto my desktop. And you'll notice that there's a separate Windows requirements uh, TXT just because uh, I think it's a little bit, we're actually going to be using Python 3.6 instead of 3.7. So I just wanted to make sure that this, this different requirements file was separate from what Ubuntu was using. So if you go into your terminal and you go into the semantic shapes directory, um, we can start by just creating an anaconda environment. So I'm going to say conda create n and I'm going to call it shapes. And our Python version is going to be Python 3.6. Go ahead and install that. All right, so now let's try doing activate shapes. If we do a pip list, you'll notice we got a fresh environment, so that's good. Um, so now what we're going to need to install is uh, something called PyDenseCRF. So in order to support the conditional random fields, and technically this is optional, you don't have to do this. You could uncomment all the uh, the CRF portions of the code. I mean, it, it kind of be a pain in the butt, but um, an issue that happens on Windows is that the, the eigen, there, there's C++ libraries within this library that are gonna fail, specifically the eigen library. So um, about a year ago, someone put this on Conda. So it's kind of an older version that runs on Python 3.6, but this was one way to kind of get around that um, not having to compile the C++ code. So uh, we're going to go ahead. I just copy and pasted it, but you can just type this into your terminal. It's conda install C, conda forge, pydent CRF. And that should install no problem. So if we do pip list, you can see the pydent CRF is in here. And there's another thing that was, currently it's failing on Windows. They might fix this in the future, but um, because I'm using an image aug library for the image augmentation, um, that depends on something called Shapely. So um, normally when you have issues where pip cannot install things properly on Windows, um, one thing that you can do is you can just search, like if you were to just Google uh, Windows pre-built binaries, you'll probably be able to find this page. And what we're looking for is Shapely. So if I find Shapely, click on it, we're gonna be using Python 3.6, so it's gonna be this download right here. This is a, a wheel file, so you can just download this wheel to the desktop. I've already done it, um, and I'm using 64-bit, so make sure you get the correct one, 32 or 64 for your system. And I've already downloaded that, so I'm going to head up a directory here on the desktop. I'm going to do a pip install of Shapely. So this is that wheel file that you just downloaded. It installed. You do a pip list. 
There it is. So I'm going to go back into the semantic shapes directory. And now I'm going to do a pip install r of windows requirements.txt. And this will be installing. This is going to take a long time. If anything is failing at this point, um, leave a comment. And if you're able to get through it, leave a comment on like how you're able to resolve it. Um, if you can't figure it out, then just leave a comment. I can try to do my best to kind of like troubleshoot you and give you some ideas to try. Um, but generally, the way I've set this up with the requirements TXT, this should be working. Okay. Um, but I will get back to you guys once this finishes uh, finishes installing. All right, guys. So if you can see here, it actually installed a lot of stuff in the shapes environment. So at this point, if you do a pip list, you can see everything's installed now. Um, so a couple of things we can check here. If you run Python, you can try importing TensorFlow as TF. That should be able to import properly. And then another thing is you could try importing Pygame. And a successful import of Pygame would look something like this. So I'm going to quit out of this. And um, let's check a couple of other things. Um, one thing, if you're you know doing your own uh, data annotation, you're going to probably be using LabelMe. So check that. And what you should see happen is LabelMe starts up. and this actually works better in Windows than it does in Ubuntu, but you can open up, you know, various directories and start annotating images. So if that works, then good. And another thing to do, you could actually just, because of the way I set this up, you could run Python train.py and you can start training up a model given all the pre-annotated data that I provided. And if that works, that's really good. Uh, I've actually already gone ahead and done that and I'll, show you guys like a working example. So I trained a model up and if everything installs properly, everything should be running here. If it doesn't, again, leave a comment, but um, the Pygame window should come up. So this is like, this is pretty much, now this this model wasn't trained to like completion. So you can see like right here, there's uh, some error in the background. It's, it's thinking that this is like one of the shapes and that commonly happens when models haven't been trained all the way. So and just to show you guys, that's what it looks like. So that's a really quick way to see if it's working for you. Um, obviously, in all of these other videos, I'm going to be going over how I built this, how you can get a better understanding of certain concepts. But um, this is one way to test if the installation is working properly on Windows. Um, another thing is that I wasn't able to get the frames per second to limit properly you might need like i'm really not sure what you would need i don't know why that's not working but um if anyone knows then leave a comment um because this could be a problem if you go to run the conditional random fields and you haven't limited your frames per second then that could be a problem but for whatever reason it wasn't working in OpenCV for me um, on windows it works fine on ubuntu but don't know why it's not working here but this is what the install should look like. Um, leave a comment if you're having trouble, but I'll see you guys in the next videos.